and welcome to the fall army worms in uh, webinar on fall, fall army worms in asia so this webinar is organized by the thai seed trade association the department of agriculture thailand and the thai crop protection association my name is kanokwan fochoi or may apsa executive director i just welcome everyone again so please wait for a few minutes i know that there will be more people who have registered and they are just joining so once we reach around um, I, I guess would be because we have around 200 people registered. So let's wait, let's just wait for a few more participants to join. Then I will just help to give a brief instruction about how to use an, uh, the function in the webinar. So I think everyone is already familiar with this tool. Uh, with that, first, I just would like to introduce our moderator for the session. So Mr. Pacho Kompanit, he is a moderator of today's webinar. He is currently the Asian and Northeast Asia Regional Business Growth Lead of Pacific Seeds. He is formerly a president of TASTA um, or the Thai Seed Trade Association. And currently he holds also the position of executive committee of both TASTA and Biotech Thailand. He has over 35 years of experience in corn seed business, starting from R&B to commercialization. So uh, I again would like to welcome Mr. Pashok to guide all of you to the session and also give, um, you know, help you to facilitate all the session today. Mr. Pashok, please. Thank you, Dr. May. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this webinar prom promise to uh, be informative as we share uh, experience and, and lesson about uh, the biggest and newest uh, pace uh, to the corn industry uh, in the region for almost uh, uh, three years now. Uh, the spread of the foreign army worm in this region uh, had uh, brought uh, about the huge damage to the corn crop and it had become uh, a threat uh, to other crop as well. Because of this, uh, Thai Sea Trade Association uh, had initiated a venue for the knowledge sh sharing uh, with the cooperation of the uh, Department of Agriculture Thailand, uh, APSA, and uh, Thai uh, Crop Protection Association. Uh, so before we start, let me introduce you uh, President of TASTA, Dr. Chaira, uh, to you to welcome uh, everyone uh, to this uh, webinar. Dr. Chaira, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to welcome all of you to this webinar on Fall Army World that has been causing big damage to the region called industri industry. Because it is uh, still new to us, as it's only come to Asia in 2018. We are still learning a lot about this place. And it is only the right and timely that country in the region share each other's experience and lesson that we have learned to deal with for our world. We welcome the participant to uh, the participant of the government of the Philippines, Myanmar, Thailand, and India in this webinar. And we hope to learn from the effort they are making in making for army worm in their respective country. We also welcome the private sectors take on this situation. We are also fortunate to have the summit the International Mess and Weed Improvement Center today. As we will be updated on the effort in research and development strategy being made by the foremost global organization that deal with corn. Lastly, it will be interesting for us to get to know the Asian action plan on four army worm as government in this region collaborate to have a third 
concerted strategy in manage this case. As president of Thai Seed Trade Association, and together with the co-organizer of this webinar, Thailand Department, Thailand Department of Agriculture, the Asia Pacific Seed Alliance, or APSA, and the Thai Crop Protection Association. I extend our welcome to those watching this webinar to all over the Asia and beyond the region. Our aim is to disseminate variable information which we can all, uh, all use as try to lessen the damage impact of four army worms on our corn crops. The feed, <clears throat> the feed is even starting to spread to other crops, including vegetables and rice. And this early, we should be ready with more knowledge and experience in dealing with this phase. Please enjoy this webinar and may we all get the relevant information that will prove useful to save our corn industry from for our Thank you and good morning again to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Chair. So let us uh, start with our first uh, session on uh, ex country experience. So at mention, each speaker will have uh, up to 15 minutes uh, to present and the participant may send their question uh, which the speaker may address uh, afterward. Our agenda is uh, divided in two parts. The first is about the country report, where we will hear uh, the management strategy applied by uh, each country. The second session, we will have presentation on the related research and development on foreign army worm, a regional an initiative that provide action plan for the country in Southeast Asia and the private sector roles in the ongoing fight against the impact of foreign army worm in the corn industry. Our first speaker will be presenting on how the Philippines has been managing the onset of foreign army worm and the strategy it applied. Uh, our speaker, Ms. Wilma Quaterno, is the chief of the crop pest management division of the Philippine Department of Agriculture, Bureau of the Plant Industry. She has uh, gained uh, a, a lot of experience in the uh, integrated pest management, crop protection, biological control, pest surveillance, rodent management, wildlife management, and farmer field school system. So please welcome uh, Ms. Wilma. Ms. Wilma, your presentation, please. Thank you, Sir Pacho. So good morning to all, and thank you for giving me a chance to present the Philippine situation now in fall army war. So may I have my slide, please? So I will be discussing the situation in the Philippines, the fall army worm for the last year. So my data is as of December 2020. Next slide, please. So this is the Philippines. As you can see, we have the map and the total number of provinces is 79. So the Philippines is an archipelago, so it is composed of many islands. The total number of provinces infested by POW is 70. So out of 79 provinces, we have 70 that are infested. But it doesn't mean the whole province is infested. Some villages have no fall army war. Our total corn area planted to corn is 6,407,095. So this is not the physical area, but the production area. And the total number of hectares out of those production area affected by four army war is 20,457.54 hectares. So as you can see, very little was affected by four army war, about 0.003 hectares. 
our national average fowl infestation per hectare is 0.32%. So it ranges from 0 0.003 to 100%. So some hectares have very few infestations while others suffer. There are so many factors connected to it. And uh, there's no actual estimated damage yet because we don't have yet that uh, data, but we estimate it to 20% of the corn production. So it's about 26.61%. But I think this is uh, overestimated. If we will take this because if you can come here and see the area, there is not mu much damage of all our new world. Next, please. Next slide, please. So these are our crops that were affected by fall army war. The most affected one is the corn. Then we have some uh, few areas for sugar cane, but it was already, there's no more now. It was already addressed and managed. So no more damage for sugar cane now. Then we have also sorghum for our center in a very limited area, less than one hectare, and it's already managed also. So our problem crop now is the corn only. So next slide, please. And these are the varieties of corn planted in the Philippines. We have the open pollinated variety. We have the conventional hybrid corn. And we have the genetically modified corn. So this genetically modified corn, we have those uh, events that have uh, lipidopteran pests like, like the Bt corn. Then those GM corn with no uh, Bt, which is Roundup ready, ready corn. And those unregistered varieties because there are some varieties that were being planted by farmers that they said is the it is genetically modified. So among these three varieties, the most affected by fall armyworm are the first and the second, but all these three are being affected now. Uh, we don't have yet the data if this genetically modified corn are, are really affected by the fall armyworm because in the Philippines, we have 5% reputes when you are planting uh, event that have lipidopteran pest uh, gene. So we can, and also in this modified corn, uh, we observe that the infestation is not that much unlike and compared to open pollinated variety and ordinary or conventional hybrid corn. Next please. Next slide please. So as I've said, the Philippines is an archipelago, and I divided my report into three major islands, which is Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Luzon is the northernmost, while Mindanao is on the southernmost. So in Luzon, we found the first uh, fall armyworm spe uh, specimen. So it is in the northernmost of Luzon. So in Luzon, we have uh, 38 provinces. And out of those 38 provinces, the total number of infested are 34. And in this area, the total number of corn hectares planted is 2,748,954.05 hectares. And as I've said, this is not our physical area, but the production area. And the total number of corn hectares infested is only 12,463.76 hectares. So the island-wide infestation is 0.45%. And the rates of infestation per hectare varies from 0 0.02 to 100%. So in Visayas, another major island, we have 16 provinces. And out of those 16 provinces, we have 14 that are infested. So as I've said in my introduction, not all villages in these provinces are affected. 
Then the total number of corn hectares planted in the Visayas, the production area is 1,180,876.54 hectares. And the total number of hectares that were affected by poor almiborm is only 663.97 hectares. So I just want to repeat that this data were gotten last year, 2020. So the island-wide infestation average is 0.06%. And the range of infestation per hectare is 0.05 to 100%. Then the next island is Mindanao, wherein we have 25 provinces. So this is the second biggest island in the Philippines. And the total number of provinces infested is 22. Again, not all villages in these uh, provinces have the coal army work. And the total number of corn hectares planted to uh, the total number of uh, hectares planted to corn is 2,477,264.60 hectares. And, uh, and those that were affected is only 7,329.81 hectares. So the island-wide average infestation is 0.30%. And the range of infestation varies from 0.0003 to 100%. Next slide, please. So I have presented this strategy before, and I know Ms. Allison is already have already memorized maybe this one. <laughs> so this is my this is our strategy. Next slide, please. So we involve the farmers up to the national level. So we have, uh, to summarize the overall strategies, we summarize it into eight. So we implement preemptive measures to avoid and prevent occurrence and spread of PAO. So it means we have, uh, for prevention of PAO, we do some strategies. Then we empower and capacitate the farmers to take early detection and actions. And for this, we are using some lures and some attractants. Then number three, proactively identify high-risk areas and hotspots for fall armyworm and implement intensified surveillance and monitoring. So after identifying the high-risk areas, we form more our resources and concentration of management in that area. Number four, we build the capacity of farmers and local petitions to manage early stages of fall spread. So when fall infestation occur in our area, we are building the capacity of farmers and local technicians so that they can address it at once. We also, for number five, we also prepare contingency measures and actions to manage and contain large scale fall outbreak. So in this large scale fall outbreak, we use integrated pest management. We have, we have cultural, so we have physical, we have biological, and the last is chemical. Then we establish support programs to sustain capacity building and awareness and managing fall army work. So we are just starting with this. In fact, our scheduled national training of trainers for, for training of farmer, for training of our farmers will be this March. Then we also engage, like Thailand, we also engage various stakeholders in the management of how to effective communication by using available tools and strategies. And also, we are now undertaking many, many researches for development on how integrated pest management. Next slide, please. So these are our PAO protocol. So we divided it into strategies. We have prevention and avoidance. We have monitoring and we have suppression. So under prevention and avoidance, we are doing fall awareness campaign. We are giving pest advisories. These advisories and we have monitors that, that these monitors are giving us uh, weekly data about the incidence of fall armyworm 
in all the regions of the country. And we have this planned quarantine regulations since we are an archipelago. So we are also doing some quarantine for products that may be the carrier of fowl to be transferred to other islands. And we have crop diversification and synchronous planting and also field sanitation. So all these are being done now, but we are still validating all of this. So there is no uh, final, uh, final strategy that we can say that is already proven. We are still validating everything. You know. So for monitoring, we divided it for early detection. So we're in, in early detection, we use trap crops. We do field inspection, and we use also commercial pest attractants. Then for surveillance, we do identification of hot spots, and we do field scouting and survey. Next, please. Next slide, please. Then for suppression, we have for early infestation, and we have the outbreaks. So early infestation, occur in localized or small areas. So we do physical and cultural methods. We do biological control and also pesticide control. These pesticides are those that are registered by our fertilizer and pesticide authority. We prevent the use of uh, illegal pesticide or those that are not registered or recommended by our fertilizer and pesticide authority. And for outbreak areas, these are the large areas. We do chemical, biological, or the whole integrated pest management. At present, we are doing both basic research and applied research. We're in, in applied research where we are doing participatory action research together with researchers and farmers. Then for sustainability, we do capacity building. We're in, there is a training we are doing for farmers, for them to be empowered and be the one to attend to the first infestation in their areas. And we are giving also infographics and also documentation. We are doing that. So we have a database for fall army work. And we are also doing that working with different concerned stakeholders. So those are our FAO protocol and strategies we are doing here in the Philippines. Next slide, please. So uh, these are the preliminary results of our FAO management strategy. So information materials in different platforms were created, resulting to preliminary awareness of some farmers and concerned stakeholders. So by this, we are empowering and capacitating the farmers to take early detections and actions against FAO. Then we have National Network of Surveillance Groups was, that was created by the national government through the Department of Agriculture, involving concerned national agencies down to village level to the regional field offices, the Department of Agriculture. This resulted to weekly data submission and weekly FAO status being reported to the Secretary of the Department of Agriculture. Next slide, please. And we were given also a quick response plan, which was approved by the President of the Philippines, which was used to purchase pheromone lures, organic and inorganic insecticides. So those pesticides or insecticides that were used were approved by the regulatory agency with conditional permits because based on our observation and until now, we are really observing or gathering data regarding the use of this pesticides, which has conditional permits for use against fall army war. Then in September, there was a department order which was signed by the Secretary of Agriculture. And uh, that uh, special order gave us a fund to strengthen the crop pest management system and related activities in the country. So at present, we are doing some infrastructure and equipment upgrading in the crop management system in the Philippines. 
Next slide, please. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to participate in this webinar. Thank you from the Philippines. Thank you, Ms. Potanukmo. Uh, we got uh, two questions for you from the participant. Okay. Uh, do you have a data on uh, sweet corn infestation of uh, fawn armyworm? Uh, uh, we have a data on sweet corn, but this is uh, very minimal because uh, sweet corn is not like uh, those being planted in major production area in the country. It's very minimal. And actually, we will be doing some uh, adaptive research regarding sweet corn on the management on polar world. Okay. So the second question, uh, what is the effective one of the treatment uh, in the Philippines? The, uh, again, the most effective treatment by the for fall armyworm in the Philippines, yep. I, uh, I think uh, it's integrated pest management and also uh, the farmer's awareness. So when the farmers know what to do, and also he knows what are the strategies that can be used against fall armyworm, so he will know when to use it, what state of the crop, and also what should be the variety we should plant in this area since this kind of infestation is present in this field, in that production area. So it's uh, farmers empowerment and integrated pest management. Okay, uh, we've got one more question come. Uh, the contact, your, your, your contact, once again, maybe we can, uh, we can share uh, uh, in the uh, report, uh, webinar report. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I need, I need test for the vegetable uh, for Nami worm. Some question to you, uh, Ms. Quartermo. Yes. What are uh, they like to know uh, any issue on the vegetable production impact by for Nami worm. Uh, the impact of uh, fall armyworm in the Philippines in corn production. Oh, for vegetable, vegetable crop. Vegetable. Uh, yes. As of now, we don't have yet any report on fall armyworm damage in vegetables. It's only in corn, sugarcane, and sorghum. Okay, okay. So, which are the bad trap crop for the fawn armyworm there in the Philippines? It's, it's, it's still, uh, we are still validating the best trap crops for fall armyworm. Okay. But we saw some, but uh, as per research, uh, they saw that there are some weeds that are alternate host of fall armyworm. So we are taking focus on that. We are focusing on those weeds. Okay, so you mentioned about uh, no report on a uh, vegetable crop. So some question about the onion situation there in the Philippines on the foreign army worm impact. Again, about vegetable? Yes. <laughs> so I said, there's no data, there's no report yet about the damage of fall army worm in vegetable in the Philippines. Okay. So what about the seed treatment uh, uh, fight uh, foreign army worm there? Which one? Uh, seed treatment. Uh, to, to, the seed treatment. Yeah, seed yeah. treatment. Yeah. yeah, the seed treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it will help, but it's not yet uh, validated. It's really working, but some are doing some seed, some seed treatment. So most of our data for technologies are still for validation. So it's the farmer who will validate it and also from the result of our scientists and their, their researches. Okay. So next, there's no fine. Next, next question. Uh, very interesting to see that the infestation is uh, quite low, uh, only in about 20,000 hectares. So compared to other countries, uh, what is working well to manage at this level? Uh, because uh, 
the Philippines uh, has been in a situation wherein most farmers have understood integrated pest management before we had that in the Department of Agriculture. And also some farmers are already educated about uh, what is in the environment that if you use more pesticide, you will be dealing with more problems. So most of our regions have list of natural enemies in their respective areas. So the natural enemies are thriving in our different corn fields in the regions. Okay, uh, any question? Uh, any, yes, you come back to Onion because uh, some of our participants have raised uh, the report in the social media about the corn armyworm in, in Onion. So can you please clarify this or, or do you have information? Uh, okay, see, okay, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will verify this. Yes. Okay, so next question. Uh, what about the foreign army worm attack in corn and sweet corn? How is the damage from corn borer? That foreign, uh, foreign army worm uh, impact on corn borer population there in the Philippines? For sweet corn? Uh, I that, that mean uh, any uh, that the foreign army will impact on the corn border population. I mean, the corn border, what the pressure of corn border there when we have a, a new, new, uh, new pace of corn border coming. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it took over already. It's now, it's now the, the major pest in corn in the Philippines. There, the corn bar, I think this, the corn border population now is, are uh, slower than before. So the coal armyworm is now the major pest in corn, although we're, we're also seeing the cutworm. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we we now uh, like to thank you, uh, Mr. Potomo, as uh, we need to uh, proceed to our next speaker. Uh, so uh, the, the remaining question we will answer later. Uh, yes, 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 I will answer it, yes. Yep. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Vilma. Please uh, give her back. Uh, Myanmar also uh, is among the country where uh, foreign army will uh, brought damage to the corn industry. So Ms. Nini uh, Hen, uh, who is the group leader in the biological, biological control unit of the Plant Protection uh, Division of Myanmar Department of Agriculture. So, uh, Please welcome uh, Ms. Nelly Hen. Uh, Ms. Nelly, uh, your presentation, please. Thank you, Mr. Bacha. Good morning and good afternoon for the where we are. Today, I would like to talk about the pest status and management policies of the four army one in Yema. Uh, first, I would like to talk about uh, our corn production area. In Myanmar, is the most of the 50% of the maize are growing in Shan State and 20% of the maize are growing in the Sakai region. These are also in uh, uh, in the, the monsoon maize. Some of the areas are we are growing in around the Ayavari River and Delta region. This is uh, also in the irrigated maize. We have the already experienced for the two more than two year experience compared to the monsoon and the irrigated maize are more infested in the months, uh, winter maize. And we are also, uh, the first year and then second years are also compared to the four infestations are uh, maybe the is are also very low. First, I would like to talk about the background history of the four army one. Firstly, FAO are already announced for the allow for the four army one in the 2018 August and 
we are also announced for the early warning of the uh, each of the uh, the wish stake and division and also our our PPD web page. And I will also want to know that uh, with the Kavi, which organized by the PPD Departments of Agriculture and Kavi with the Four Army One Washout in Myanmar. This is uh, we are uh, in the 2018 December. Also discussion on the risk prediction maths and for based on the favorable environment. We can see here the, the, the red area is the our highly maize growing area in Shan State and Sakai region. Firstly, we are recorded for the four army one in the central area of Myanmar, Nebiro, Chako, and Nienjian. These are in the winter maze. And we are also collect the, the lava stage and rearing the, our laboratory and we contact with the other international organization. And we are officially announced the presence of four army one in Myanmar to IBBC in January, 2019. Four is reported in the majority of all maize growing area in 2019 and rapidly spread in Myanmar. This, I would like to show the biology and life stages, the different life stages of for army one. And here you want to, you can see the different life stages symptom. The small lava stage, you can see the window patches and small pinhole and a dark lava, later lava stage, you can see the many pieces and the, the leaf damage and then also cop. This is the first activity of working with the USAID. The four army one experience for the international expert from Michigan State University, Mexico, Southern Africa and ANIA. We have three days the free inspiration and Two day workshop. We are discussing about with knee assessment, monitoring, and high BM management plan with, with in this workshop. And solve scouting video clip are also translated with the our language. And the most preferable for the, the string, our country string are the molecular identification and you. This strain is the main strain from the Michigan State University. Also, we have published for the research, one research paper, Southern East Asia for Army One are closely related to the populations of Africa and Asia, consistent with common origins and recently mitigation. And also we are Gavi with Gavi and mass extension campaign with the national response plans and we are uh, the recommend for the scientific decision making. And also we, we are doing well the national forum, uh, supporting by Gavi and join with FAO, CIMIT, USAID, YAU, DA, and departments of agricultural research and all of the stakeholder implement in terms of the research extension and best management and awareness. And we have the one year emergency for Army One emergency response program, which also introduced the farming's application, TOT training with the Kate Crossman for Skype, and then uh, farming applications are also translated with our language. Farming applications are efficient monitoring system in Myanmar are established and we are TOT for the central level start and the extension stuff. How to use the, these applications and be inspection. Also the pheromone threat data are information to and then we can early warning for the information to the farmer and also share into the four army one in global platform.
these are the high level meeting to obtain the official commitments use of the four army one in Nebido. And the, this type of the pheromone trap, are, we already distributed the pharma extension one and all of the maize growing area <coughs> and the lura, this type of lura. We can check the after five days and then we can catch a lot of the, uh, the modes. You can see here more than around about the 700. And we can also the distribute the four army one ICT materials and TOD training for the extension and plant protection staff and awareness among the stakeholder on for infestation in Myanmar uh, increase. We have the training content cover the four detail of the biologic and damage center monitoring and scounding integrated for management and natural infestation and the, what is the beneficial insects. We have the some activities of the efficacies of the different biological and botanical insecticide. We have the eight treatment using with the BT, Izawi, BT, Kataski, and Ning, Ace Red, and Tabago. The, this, uh, this kinds of the insecticides uh, uh, normally use the maize growing season, the five time for the farmer acceptable level and spinosis and even merging benzoids are only, we can spray the two time. And also most effective intercropping with maize, cowpea and navia grass is a border. We have the five treatment and in this, uh, in this free trial, we can get the more but the favorable for the good reduce the four army one and marketing acceptable coke are maize, cowpea, and navia grass. This is we can compare to the among the uh, treatment of the maize and cowpea and navia grass is the compared to the other ones. Launches of the national wide control campaign and hence the awareness programs and monitoring and scouting awareness within the communication materials and provision of the biopesticide and PPE. This is uh, for the uh, FAO supporting and mass production of egg porosity and trigogramma that survey for their beneficial insects. Here you can see the different kinds of the beneficial insects. Uh, we are collected. I, I can mention here the some of the um, beneficial insects for where we are interesting one. We can collect the trigogramma species and telenomas and other lava porosity, harbobrogon. But uh, harbor backgrounds are also, we can test it in the laboratory condition is the okay, but uh, we, we are not sure in the fee condition. And also fee natural amine for the four army one collected from the lava porosity dry immunity, predatory bugs, and then endomonopathogenic fungi. Uh, this is the different kinds of the free data we are collected in the farm. We are also interesting for the EOX for the for army one free data. And following the IBN intervention, synchronized planting, the plant density, intercropping with corn bee, use the pheromone traps and release the egg porosity and you can spray the early stage BT or Ning Y and then buff branch, crush, egg mosses and lava. We are also recommended for the low risk of the pesticide. But the farmers are very familiar and highly hazardous pesticide and the cheaper one. This is, a, I would like to show the mass progressions of the trigogramma in four army one. We have the trigogramma factory are already set up 
with uh, to control of their rice ten border. Uh, this is the border citizen cage, and then this is the we are using with the coxera eggs. This is, a, I would like to show the mass production of the ear wits. Very easy in the lab scale, and then we can feed it with the cat food. Sorry. And how can we support the farmer to improve their management of the four army one? Provide the most specific guideline for the pesticide and well organized with the pharma learning center and then strengthening the pharma feedback mechanism of the motivated extension and reconsider the pharma group model, collaboration and pharma participatory approach and innovation. Challenging for the next step. Farmers are familiar with highly toxic insecticides and management policy should be used consistently and correctly by the farmer. Farmers are friendly technology approach, identify and validate five IPN demonstration plot and should be recommend for the efficient use of the soft pesticide in young larva stage. More awareness to using the biopesticides and augmentation of the beneficial insects. And challenging for the next step are discover and host range of four army one. Status and social economics of the four army ones. Tools and technique for the surveillance and monitoring and reporting. Mass productions of feasible biocontrol agents and natural biological control, fertilization and plant density, rain, and also compensations of the May plants are related to the G. These are the ongoing projects. Strengthening with the interregional cooperation of the sustainable management for, for Army One, FAO South South Cooperation and ASEAN Asian plans on for Army One control and collaboration research of the IPN for JICAS. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nini Hen. So it's very interesting to see a lot of uh, 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 strategy being uh, implemented in Myanmar to control the foreign army worm. So uh, let's take up some question here if, if any participant uh, have some question here. Uh, uh, Nini, what is the specific uh, trico, uh, trico species or for Nami worm uh, control? Yeah, we have already the, the, the Trigogramma japonica is there to use for the Stanbora and then Trigogramma chylonis are we are using with the, some vegetable. But we are not uh, the molecular identification for the four army, uh, host from the four army one. This is uh, we are using the Trigogramma species, not, not I, we are, didn't know the, this frame, but in the lab scale, we are compared to the Chylonis and this trigramma strain more effective for the, this one. And then we are uh, mass productions and release for the four army one feed, uh, the maize feed. We didn't check. Only collection from the feed. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss Nanny. Uh, uh, We'd like to thank you her and please uh, give her a big hand. Uh, more? Okay. 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 Uh, one, one more question, uh, Ms. Nini. Yes. Uh, is sugar cane effect in Myanmar? Mm -hmm. Sugar cane. Any, any, any uh, sugar cane damage in, in Myanmar? Uh, uh, the, the, yeah, not damage level. We can see only some information from the sugar cane plant. And what about the vegetable? No, we didn't see the vegetable. Okay, uh, one more, one more question. Yes. How could 
how did the mass copy Napier uh, class combination reduce the damage by von Army uh, This is uh, not uh, my walk, walking the free trial, but the other people told this. Uh, they checked the four army one population and then uh, the market driver for the copes. This is, uh, they are growing the sweet corn. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, one, okay, before we move next, uh, we have one more question. Yes. Uh, oh, this one, you got two. <laughs> Have you established a threshold level for foreign army worm in Myanmar? Uh, this is the depend on the situation of the crop stage and the uh, the four army one the lava stage. Yeah. What do farmers choose? Uh, and normally, normally this is the difficult to say because of the most of the farmers are uh, they want to see the some level of the damage and then they want to spray a lot. Yeah. Okay. About about the worm uh, 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 control. And how how what the farmer choose uh, uh, to to control the worm? Yeah. Most of the case are uh, we are already awareness for the early warning for the early detection. This is the first time they are also used with the pheromone threat and then they have come in the early state they can spray neem or something like that after that they didn't get the in this stage and they will be stayed most of the farmers are used the even medium benzoic or sacpamitrin or yeah okay okay thank you okay let's move to next speaker about thailand so let us see how thailand cope with uh, how these uh, foreign army worm uh, affect the corn crop in the country uh, we have uh, Dr. Prithichat uh, Panya to, to give us the detail on this. Uh, Dr. Prithichat is the Director of uh, Entomology and Zoology in the Plant Protection Research and Development Office of the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative of Thailand. So please welcome uh, Dr. Prithichat. Dr. Prithichat, have uh, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of Thai DOA, we would like to thank EFSA to provide this beneficial event. And we also thank for all participants coming for this meeting. Today, as a Thai representative, I would like to present uh, on the topic of the success and challenge on fall army worm management in Thailand. Next, please. Today, my presentation is divided into four topics. The first topic, uh, I will talk with the characteristic of meat and specialty corn system in Thailand. The second topic, uh, I will inform you the current for army worm status in Thailand. Uh, I, mean, I will focus on the infestation level and action. And the third topic, this is the most important part for me today. I will inform you the research activity and the result uh, that we have conduct uh, one year. Uh, and the last topic, I would like to inform you the current and future plan uh, in Thailand. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Firstly, I would like to introduce uh, maize and corn cultivation system in Thailand. Uh, for maize, we use for animal feeding. Uh, the maize is occupied more than 1 million hectares a year. And land cultivate, most of the land cultivate is in the north part of, of Thailand. Next piece. For specialty corn, uh, they occupy 0 0.07 million hectare, and we separate uh, specialty corn into three groups. The first group is the sweet corn uh, for processing industry and fresh market, and the second one is the baby corn for processing industry and fresh market, and the third one is the waxy corn for fresh market. Next slide, please. 
the, the second topic, I would like to inform you the current for we will say that in Thailand. Uh, I will inform you from the 2019 and 2020 because this is the uh, update information. Uh, the four army worm, uh, the first decision of four army worm in Thailand is uh, on 19 December 2018. And in 2019, Department of Agriculture Extension report that uh, the infestation of four army worm in 2019 is approximately 236,000 hectares. And in 2017, the infestation is declined approximately 60% uh, to 60,000 hectares in 2020. And the yield lost about 25 to 40% in 2020. Next slide, please. After the, the first detection, uh, IDOA established the national from Army Worm Task Force, and we launched the emergency plan. And then we distribute the information by using various uh, kind of media, such as uh, Facebook, uh, live application, newspaper and television. Next slide, please. And we also uh, exhibit the communication uh, among private section and among the official, for example, for extension staff and uh, free, uh, about the free company and pen protection. Uh, Office in many in in the region uh, of EOA, and we uh, gave them the control measure. It's an emergency emergency uh, kit for uh, at that time. So we provide uh, like an infographic and brochure, everything to uh, extension staff. Next slide, please. The third topic. This is a we. I I would like to start with the. The most important part in, 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 in this uh, today. The, uh, the research activity for Thai DOA uh, in April uh, to 2019, uh, the Thai DOA provide the budget to my, my office uh, to conduct the research. And the research activity we separate into the activity. The next slide, please. The activity that we have done the research. Uh, the first activity uh, that is the diagnostic and genetic diversity, biology, and host plan of for all we The second one is the chemical control and application technology, and third one is this the biological control. So let's move to the the result of uh, our activity. Next slide, please. The first activity about the exotic and genetic diversity and biology of and host link. Next slide, please. We have done the research on the experiment. The first one is the exotic and genetic diversity of four omnivore. And the second experiment is the biology of four omnivore. And the final activity is the study on host link of four omnivore that uh, we shoot uh, 28 economic plan uh, for study in this topic. Uh, next slide, please. I, I would like to summarize uh, the result. The result uh, based on COI sequence data, we found that we, we found uh, bot corn and light stain in Thailand for all people. And for the uh, biology, we found that uh, the lava state is approximately one month and the pupa about 10 to 18 days. And the adult of female is about approximately two to three weeks and male is about 
to read. Next slide, please. And for this study, the study of the hotling, we, we found that for a mealworm in, in Thailand, uh, they can develop successful to adult just only on meat, sorghum, and uh, sun hem. But uh, for otter pet, otter, otter plant, we, they cannot uh, successful to, to adult. And I will inform you later about the uh, complete uh, result for this experiment. Next slide, please. The second activity, we have done the research on chemical control and application technology. Uh, this activity, we separate into uh, three, three experiments. The first one is the, the seed treatment. And the second one is the about application. Uh, and also, we have done the research on Fourier application. And the last one we uh, listed on the topic of toxicity. So let's move to the first one. For this treatment, we, we have done the research and we found that uh, three chemicals uh, that have effective, that, that uh, as follow the cyanthan uh, the lead of 20 milliliters per one kilogram of seed. The second one is the Corenta Niripo uh, with the lead of seven milliliters per one kilogram of seed. And the third one is Cyanha Niripo Hat Thai uh, They use the lead of seven milliliters per one kilogram of seed, of seed uh, show the high effective to control by more than two weeks. Next slide, please. For Fourier application, we recommend 10 insecticide that have effective, such as uh, the first one is the imamectin benzoate, uh, 5%. And the second one is imamectin benzoate, 1.92%. Uh, and spinitolam, uh, cofinopur, indoxacar, fubenamide, corentanipo, and lufenolon. This one is the, the most effective one. And you can see the lab of application in the table and the ILAC group and also the duration for control. That's why uh, for spinifolam, we, we, we can control uh, about 10 to 12 days, but the order uh, approximately seven days for control. Next slide, please. This is uh, for uh, test for uh, efficacy of the chemical. Next slide, please. Uh, for spray application, we should uh, two spray applications for evaluate. The first one is the area application, and the second one is crowd application. Next slide, please. For area application, we should two model of uh, UAV. UAV is unmanned aerial vehicle. We show the first one is a helicopter ULV. It is a representative of the single loader UAV. And the second one is the, the drone, is a multi loader. Next slide, please. And cloud application. Cloud application we use at the farmer factory and we also adapt some equipment uh, to, to do the research, uh, such as the boom sprayer. Uh, to, uh, and many, many applications. Next slide, please. And the result we found that uh, swaying volume of a single loader ULV is uh, the optimum spray volume is 8 to 16 liters per hectare. And for drone, uh, about uh, seven point five to twelve point five liters per hectare, and also uh, for cow application, the boom sprayer is give the good result to control for omnivores. Next slide, please. 
In addition, we uh, collaborate with uh, Engineering Institute of Thai DOA to design the equipment uh, that we, we call this one is the air assist boom sprayer. Uh, this is alternative choice for control for mealworm in the, the big area. So now this is in, in the process. Next slide, please. This one we, we test in, now we test uh, in two locations in uh, Tha Poin and Suko Thai Poin. Uh, the, the result uh, is quite good. So in the future, if the, the try, I, we, 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 now we, we try to, to do on the, the last try in Suko Thai. Uh, if uh, everything okay, we will provide this to, to farmer or the supplier. Next slide, please. The toxicity of insecticide. This one we have the colleague to collect the farm worm in in the whole country, and uh, they they found that now now until now uh, there is no resistant to recommend insecticide in Thailand. But for this uh, issue we need to monitor. This is a routine monitor. So maybe in the future, if the farmer not gain the knowledge for rotation of insecticide, I'm afraid maybe some insecticide in the future, we can, we can, we can uh, find the resistance. So this one, uh, we will try to keep the insect for the whole country like a routine job. Next slide, please. Uh, the next, the, the, the third activity, this is the four by only call control. Next slide, please. We have done eight research experiment for parasite, predator, and also for pathogen. Today, I would like to show just only the uh, finished experiment. So, Next slide, please. The result for predator, we, we uh, recommend three effective predators, uh, such as the skin liquid, uh, sting bug, and airwick. And we recommend uh, period to release, timing, and late application to, to farmer. This one is the result. Next slide, please. And the uh, current status uh, and future plan. Uh, for for mealworm in Thailand, the future plan, we uh, will start to do the research on IPM. For next slide, please. Uh, after we finish all of the experiment, we determine to combine all experiment uh, to the IPM project. And after that, uh, we will give the recommend and the packet uh, to farmer. This one is the, uh, the second version. We will, if we finish the IPM, we will give the farmer to the, the, the third version that combine the IPM in, in, in uh, infographic. Now, for, Thai, uh, for recommend, we recommend to use uh, C treatment. After that, just only spray chemical insecticide or biological insecticide to, to tea time is enough. And we try to combine the predator and parasite. So in the next version, we will combine all of the experiment, the successful uh, experiment to the uh, the third version of the uh, infographic. Next slide, please. For future plan, we we determine uh, to publish uh, the guideline for the farmer. Next slide, please. And research collaboration. Now we we have done the research uh, collaboration with Jacob. And we also search for the opportunity to cooperate with the other organization such as the Group Asia. Next slide, please. The topic that uh, Thai DOA installed uh, 
uh, including the monitoring and early warning system, insecticide susceptibility, uh, mating disruption, natural enemy by oversight, and so on. So, next slide, please. Finally, uh, I would like to, to thank EPSA and all, all the participants to uh, give a chance for me to uh, present in, in webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we might take up some uh, question here. Uh, uh, participant who want to send your question, please. We have six, huh? Okay, we have six question now. What are the reasons for reduced infestation of foreign army work in Thailand this year? What, why this year, uh, last year, let's say 2020, uh, foreign army work pressure uh, was so low as compared to uh, 2019? Yeah, I think in, in my opinion, I think after we uh, learned the information to farmer, I think farmer know how, how to control. That's why on 2020, uh, the uh, infestation is reduced. Uh, for example, I would like to, to, to talk in, in my case because for uh, my experience, for uh, format, for feeding, for animal feeding, the farmer, they, they need to know before they have uh, the insect uh, that infest. Uh, they know just only corn boiler. And the first season that uh, for Khami worm come to Thailand in, in Kanchanaburi province, they didn't know. So they, they cannot uh, control in the suitable time. That's why uh, the percentage infestation is really high. Uh, in normal practice in, in, in Thai uh, farmer for uh, animal feeding corn or uh, format, they just only apply the herbicide. This is a normal packet. And after that, until harvesting, they come back to the home. They did not come again for, for, uh, uh, for to, do, to do anything in the field. So now we, we, we try to inform them. We have the new insect that everybody need to do in the suitable time because uh, if you let the four army worm infect in the field, I think uh, the critical point is uh, from uh, germination about germin uh, after germination 20 day, I think this is the critical period. So you, you need to, to do something in, in your field. That's why on 2020, I think the infestation is uh, declined because uh, they know what, what, what they, they need to do. Okay, the, the next question, uh, are there any other pathogens like a bacteria or virus that can be a spread associated with a foreign army worm? You think? Uh, no, no, no. No, okay. Yeah. So that means uh, foreign, army, foreign army worm not, does not bring any other pathogens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Lovely point. The, the next question. Uh, which one is the most effective, the area or ground application for foreign army worm control? Uh, in, for my, uh, our implement, uh, the most effective for, for ground application is the uh, use the boom application. That, that spray by boom. Yeah, because, and uh, you need to adjust the nozzle uh, into the wall. Okay. The, the most effective one. Okay, uh, next question. What is the efficacy, efficacy period or control period with seed treatment? Uh, uh, about two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Okay. If, if for your application control for 10 days mostly? Uh, seven to, to 10 days, depend on the chemical. Okay. How much uh, control uh, you can expect in uh, reality from seed treatment? I think for, for me, this is a one of the, the good uh, uh, Strategy for I think this is a, the, the the effective one. Okay. Okay. Next question: Where we can check the predator for application in small tri area? Again, please. Uh, where can we take the predator for application in small tri area? That means there is 
uh, sample of a predator to to carry out the crime? Can they, where where they, where the contact to get? Do, do you have any uh, service to to keep uh, to? Oh, uh, we we, yeah. we 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 try to uh, give the knowledge to farmer field school. After that, I think this is one the farmer can do by by themselves. We 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 try to uh, give them the the sim simple the simple way. So if they want to collect some sample, can they contact your office or? or yeah, 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 sure, sure. Okay, so that, uh, so maybe you, you can give your address and contact. So for yeah. anyone who is interested in yeah. Yeah. Uh, collecting the, the sample. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, when farmer decide to go for chemical spray, do they have a clear guidance for proper product uh, 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 registration program? Rate, I mean, they, they have a, a specific rate, what my understanding. You mean rate of infestation? Yeah, uh, rate of application rate of, of chemical. Yeah, yeah, we have. Okay. How did they decide to use this product? Oh, okay. are, uh, are they rely on, relying on retailer or the specific expert provide uh, the guidance on the uh, uh, insecticide application? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they rely on the, our recommendation. Okay, okay. Because uh, uh, the Department of Agriculture, I understand yeah. that you uh, provide uh, the list of the chemical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So next question: Will you plan to use the uh, pheromone trap in Thailand? Yeah, yeah, sure. This is uh, one of the uh, our experiment, but I did not show because uh, that belong to uh, another institute. After uh, the the finish. We will uh, report and uh, keep the knowledge to, to you, sure. Okay, next question. Uh, do you alternate the kind of pesticide you use in controlling uh, foreign army work? If you do so, how often do you alternate pesticides? Uh, we use uh, alternate, uh, we, we alternate uh, according to the ILAC and uh, alternate according to the foreign army worm life cycle. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, when you say the treatment is effective for two weeks, is it two weeks from sowing or two weeks from the germination? From germination. Okay. Okay. So I think we got no more question. Uh, thank you, Doctor Pucha, for your uh, very welcome. Thank you. Presentation. Uh, please uh, give him the back. Thank you. So we for the next speaker. Unfortunately, that we just uh, received a message from uh, Doctor uh, uh, Bakiras or Shawri that he, he is sick, so he cannot make a, a presentation today. So we will include his uh, PowerPoint presentation in, in the uh, meeting report, so it will be uh, circulated uh, later. So uh, I hope you get well soon, uh, Doctor uh, Shawri. So. Uh, let, let's add, uh, move to the, the next uh, speaker. Ah, two questions more. Okay. Okay. Do, do we have that? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so Dr. Pujita, maybe we, we take uh, uh, two more questions for you. Okay. Uh, or, or no, question to on country. Sorry. Have you studied on the part of the production cost? How much it affect to global production cost increase? Estimate by percentage. Uh, in, 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 in my uh, point of view, it depends on the, the situation, but uh, it depends on situation of uh, the, the infestation and depend on the situation of the, the price of chemical. But uh, we estimate the, uh, the price is uh, increased if, if the farmer follow our instruction. I think cost just increased is not more than 20%. The uh, cost, uh, the 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 most the most effective cost is the labor. Okay. It's not, it's not chemical. Yeah, chemical just only. Uh, I think if like uh, follow our instruction, just only it's not more than about about for some chemical just only uh, two dollar per per light. That means how to say about twenty about twelve twelve dollar per hectare like that. It's not more, but, but the, the most efficient for production is the labor to spray. 
Okay, uh, what about Myanmar and the Philippines about the, uh, the cost of work production to control the foreign army room? I mean, yeah, the space. Nini, do you have any 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 information or or or, or Buma, uh, Do you have any uh, information to share? About, Sorry, please. Uh, we are about the uh, additional cost of uh, 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 the production of corn uh, in, in regard to the control of the uh, foreign army world. Yes, uh, percent, the are using with the spraying with the insecticide. Yeah, maybe two or three times spraying costs. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, how, how many percent in, in, in addition to the normal cost? You think for the foreign army will control? Yeah. 10%, 20% in Myanmar? And around about the 10 or 15%. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what about uh, Philippines, um, uh, Ms. Potomo? Do you have uh, the data to share? No. Okay, so what is next, the next question? Uh, is uh, monitor what? Uh, monitoring of for uh, using CO, CO, COIT be ongoing in 2021? Dr. Chan, using COI. Yeah, we 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 have the uh, oh, I mean. yeah the the yeah, according uh, I mean the researcher after Julian will do this uh, activity. I will ask ask her uh, if they have the pocket if she have the pocket. Okay. Okay. Uh, on your effort in the control, are you planning for extensive uh, biocontrol? Running program with facility network in Thailand. Yeah, sure, sure. We 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 try to establish the like a pay control community in the field, and we will provide uh, how to say uh, the best way to learning insect. Uh, not only insect, uh, not not predator, parasite predator and pathogen. We will uh, give them, but this one is belong to uh, Department of Agricultural Extension. But for the technique. We will transfer to uh, Department of Agricultural Extension. After that, we will like uh, support the technical support. We we have plan. We have plan. We 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 have eight hundred and eighty four uh, center in 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 Thailand. Any question? No? Any question? No. Okay. Thank you. So the next speaker, uh, Doctor B M Prasanna. Uh, who is the director of a global based uh, program CIMIC? Actually, Dr. Pasana has been uh, leading CIMIC effort uh, uh, together with international and natural uh, national partners in tackling the challenge of foreign army work in both Africa and Asia. He provides technical oversight for an array of multi institutional projects on development and deployment of CIMIC state in silent and nutritionally uh, enriched this variety in the uh, topic of uh, Sub-Saharan uh, Africa, Asia, and Latin America, beside application of novel tools and technology for enhancing genetic gain and, and building efficiency. So uh, please welcome uh, Dr. Pasana. Dr. Pasana, please, uh, your presentation. Ah, we, cannot no. we cannot hear you. Uh, okay. okay, can you hear me now? Yes, 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 we can hear you now. Thank you, thank you very much, Chair, and to the organizers of this uh, important initiative, this webinar, um, and to the TASTA uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak on uh, sustainable management of Palami Worm in Asia and the need for implementing uh, a well coordinated uh, research and development strategy. Um, now, we all recognize that Fala Miwam is a global problem. Uh, since till 2016, it was a 15, rather it was confined to the Americas. And since 2016, it moved to Africa and now occupies more than 44 countries um, have been reported to have Fala Miwam incidents. And in 2018, as we have heard from the presentations, uh, it is 
prevalent in several countries in the Asia Pacific. Uh, the most recent, uh, of course, is Australia uh, uh, and a few islands near, countries near. And why is it so difficult for us to manage Palamivong? Uh, we have heard this from uh, different presentations. Uh, the, the pest typically feeds at night, hides during the day, pupates underground, has a huge hostage, but as we have again heard from uh, several speakers, the particular preference is to maize. Uh, it has a wide, high fecundity or a reproductive rate, a long range of environmental and uh, large range of habit, uh, habitats suitability. And uh, we all know that uh, Fala Miwam is a very strong flyer. The moths can travel hundreds of kilometers before Wobi position. Uh, coupled with this uh, is the increasing understanding of the Fala Miwam population dynamics in the Asia Pacific. Recent uh, publications highlight how the population is not typically migrating, not only within the region, but also within specific countries, for example, in China. Uh, how the typical migrations are happening. So we are now getting a better understanding of the Fala Miwam population dynamics in Asia, but uh, still a lot more needs to be understood uh, in terms of uh, uh, the Fala Miwam strains and uh, their effects in different countries. One more important factor to remember is that in the tropical countries, uh, typically like what we see in Asia, the life cycle is not more than 28 to 30 days. Uh, so therefore you can expect multiple generations of Fala Miwam uh, within a field in the same crop season uh, that actually complicates uh, many of the treatments and therefore we need to be extremely vigilant about the monitoring of the Fala Miwam incidents at different crop stages, not just at the early stages of crop growth, but also during the subsequent stages, including uh, the early reproductive stage. Um, maize is such an important crop for Asia. And uh, uh, however, we also need to recognize that Asia has diverse applications of maize. Uh, it is mostly used as a, a constituent of poultry and livestock feed, uh, nearly 80%, and providing income security to millions of small holders. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, Maize is also used as food in certain pockets uh, in Asia, including, for example, in Nepal, uh, Bhutan, some um, uh, belts in India, uh, as well as in Pakistan, and uh, a few countries even in the ASEAN region. So it's important to recognize that maize is not just a feed crop, but also as a, is important as a food crop. Uh, and the third most important thing, specialty maize, is, uh, is growing in its importance. And uh, Thailand is particularly most famous for this. A, an array of specialty maize types are grown in the country. Therefore, our integrated pest management packages have to be typically adopted uh, to this diverse maize farming context in Asia. Uh, the economic injury levels uh, on the economic thresholds could vary uh, depending upon the type of the crop we are uh, growing and for which purpose we are growing and uh, what is the income levels of the farmer. So in terms of integrated Fala Miwa management, uh, there are a few major uh, themes that keep highlighted uh, uh, time and again. One, we need to have uh, innovative institutional changes to implement more effectively integrated pest management, uh, which has not really taken place so, so much as compared to application of individual treatments. Uh, we also need to develop uh, communication resources or educational materials to improve farmers' understanding and management of Fala Miwam, together with the extension agents. A strong monitoring system has to be put in place at the country level as well as at the regional level. Uh, I'm not such a big fan of early warning system, uh, but what I'm really concerned about is a strong monitoring system, typically a digital monitoring system collecting not just uh, information uh, uh, through primary sources, but also through farmers uh, and uh, getting uploaded uh, in a monitoring system. Multi-location trials need to be done on various control products and typically in combination. And we also need to accelerate uh, registration processes of uh, proven products. 
We also have uh, much to do on ascertaining the efficacy of the natural enemies. A number of natural enemies are getting reported, but uh, the efficacy data is very limited as of today uh, in many countries. And explore the opportunity or the need for augmentative biological control wherever it is required. And certainly Asia has a long way to go in terms of intensifying the work on host plant resistance, uh, especially the native genetic resistance to polam ivam. I'll come to that. Uh, we have to invariably tell the farmers to focus on good agronomic management. Uh, there is no substitute for that. And prepare the private sector uh, for an appropriate polam ivam response wherever the pest is causing major uh, damage. So communication resources, I'm glad that uh, uh, Philippines talked about it on the Sabo video, adopting to the own country. Um, similarly, several such communication fact sheets have been prepared by CIMIT, CABI, and others uh, in different countries in Asia. Uh, this is, for example, in Bangladesh. And a new Fala Miwam research collaboration portal has been established by CABI uh, together with uh, partners like CIMIT, ECPA, and so on. So this is a very important resource, a global web resource for us uh, to upload our data or the new information on Fala Miwam research for development. Establishing a strong monitoring system, again, I will highlight this. Uh, this is the example of the monitoring or Fala Miwam monitoring system that CIMIT has established together with partners uh, in Bangladesh, an array of partners. And this is enabling us to uh, not just monitor at, uh, the, at the early stages of crop growth, but also the infested worlds, the ear, ear damage, and so on, sampling a large number of farmers' fields uh, through a digital uh, application, digital app. Similarly, FAO has a FAMUS application, uh, which can also be used effectively for this kind of monitoring. As I said, the good agronomic management and agroecological management using low cost and science-based approaches should be integral part of IPM. Uh, typically, increasing diversity from the field to the landscape, integrated soil fertility management, and evidence-based practices as has been highlighted in previous presentations on intercropping, maize with cowpea and napier grass and so on. Biological control, a large number of native and natural biological control agents are, are reported uh, from Africa as well as from Asia, more than 150 such parasitoids from 14 different insect families, uh, baculoviruses, entomopathogenic fungi, nematodes, a lot of intensive work is going on from the entomology teams in Asia. Uh, several institutions in Asia are engaged in this work. But so far, what we are seeing is conservation biological control um, and very, very limited augmentative releases, uh, except for a very few countries. Uh, the biopesticides and botanicals definitely have a role to play in the integrated pest management strategy, be it bacillus thuringiensis, sprays, or fungi like metavisium, Bavaria bassiana, or baculoviruses, um, botanicals, if a proper quality control is achieved, uh, typically neem and pyrethrum. Uh, these are several potential benefits. I don't have to highlight that. Uh, but what is really important is quality control of these pesticides and uh, a systematic assessment of their efficacies. There are still, still several constraints in the use of biopesticides. From the supply side, only a very small proportion of registered biopesticides in Asia, but the market share is expected to increase. On the cost side, they are typically more expensive than synthetic pesticides. So we need to have a control over the cost. On the demand side, many farmers are not even aware of the existence of such pesticides and how they work. We need to create awareness. On the efficacy side, we also need more data. So harmonizing registration procedures, improving the local production and supply chain management, having smart formulations and educating the farmers about the biopesticide, their strengths and weaknesses. These are all really, really important to improve the effectiveness and the reach of biopesticides. On the host plant resistance, uh, there are typically two types. One, you have native genetic resistance, identifying and utilizing crop germplasm with resistance to a particular insect pest like palamimam, and the transgenic resistance using genes from external sources, that is outside maize, for instance, 
to make the maize plant resistance to the insect pest. Both are equally important and both are complementary. And insect resistant maize, uh, CIMIT has done a lot of work, especially in the 1990s, uh, because remember, Mexico has reported this pest way back, uh, several decades back. So this is using our tropical germplasm base, a number of insect resistant uh, tropical maize populations, as well as multiple borer resistant populations have been bred from 1970s to 90s. And this is particularly relying, for instance, on Caribbean germplasm, like the Cuban flints. And a parallel and significant effort of resistance to fall armyworm native genetic resistance was also done at some US universities and USDA, ARS in Mississippi. Uh, they also capitalized on CIMIT's tropical maize germplasm with uh, native genetic resistance to insects like fall armyworm. But when the best uh, outbreak started in, in Africa, uh, then we had to systematically examine uh, what is the level of resistance of this uh, germplasm against uh, fall populations in Africa. So we established a huge screenhouse complex, almost uh, 13 such screenhouses at one of our most, uh, uh, what I call state of the art experimental stations at Kibako in Kenya, uh, about three hours drive from Nairobi. And uh, each screenhouse is almost half an acre size. Uh, and you can see uh, these extensive screenhouse complexes enabled us to screen uh, several thousand germplasm entries. Uh, against fall armyworm under artificial infestation. Uh, the products from this screening uh, validated CIMIT maize lines with native genetic resistance to fall armyworm, like what I have listed here, CML 71, 125, 330, 338, 370, 574. These are international public goods, and they have been disseminated to several public and private sector partners in both Asia and Africa, so that you can enrich your breeding programs. Uh, by using these native genetic resistant inbred lines. But what about the products? Uh, what about hybrids? Uh, typically, uh, we don't just release hybrids with only fall armyworm tolerance. It needs to have uh, other adoptive and agronomic traits. And that's what we have done in the last three years, intensive work, uh, not only uh, screening several thousand germplasm entries, but taking each entry, a promising entry, we shortlisted eight hybrids, each hybrid in one screenhouse with no choice. That means no other genotype grown there. And every plant challenged by fall armyworm, artificial infestation. You can see the responses of a resistant hybrid versus a susceptible commercial check. Absolutely devastated versus what has survived and also yielded significantly, almost four to five tons per hectare more. Uh, compared to a susceptible check. And the three fall armyworm tolerant elite maize hybrids uh, thus developed by CIMIT have been announced uh, through our website, CIMIT website on December 23rd, 2020. And uh, a number of countries are now in the process of, of nominating these hybrids for varietal release in Africa. And uh, wherever white maize is grown, these are all white maize hybrid, white kernel hybrids. Wherever white maize hybrids are grown in Asia Pacific, we can partner with the relevant national institutions, introduce them and get them evaluated and uh, go ahead with the varietal release process. So that is a good news, not just for Africa, but also for Asia. But remember, Asia Pacific grows predominantly yellow maize hybrids. And therefore we need to transfer this trait very quickly into the elite yellow maize genetic backgrounds so that our stakeholders, large number of smallholder farmers can have access to these uh, improved genetic resources. Uh, BT maize, again, in Asia is currently grown in Philippines, almost uh, 660,000 hectares, and Vietnam, 92,000 hectares. These are the figures in 2019 that were provided by my friend Srinivas from the Bayer Crop Science and BT maize events are also approved in Pakistan, although yet to be commercialized, they are still in the process of testing. Uh, and uh, approval process, testing and approval process have also been initiated in Indonesia and China. Although many of these BT events, the primary target pests are different. 
some of these events also have potential to control Falami worms, Podoptera frugipada. Uh, so that's what we see here. A number of events released in Philippines, Vietnam, Pakistan, and Monate 9034, or MIR-162, VIP-3A, vegetative insecticidal protein 3A. These are the products that can, or events that can typically resist uh, Falami worm to a greater degree. The efficacy of such events has been very well established in several countries, including Brazil, and most recently in Vietnam, as well as in South Africa. So there is no doubt about the efficacy and benefits of BT maize as regards Falami worm control is concerned. Uh, but what is real important again is uh, a robust insect resistance management strategy. This is a key component of integrated pest management. There are several publications that are emerging in the recent years, especially in 2020, on genetic structure and insecticide resistance characteristics of Falami worm populations, not only through the haplotypes of uh, three or four specific genes, but also genomic and transcriptome analysis. So we need to prevent or mitigate the onset of resistance um, in Falami worm populations to insecticides, not only synthetic insecticides, but also BT events, and generate better understanding of resistance profiles across the region. This is really important uh, to guide our present and future Falami worm strategies. And that's what we are now doing with the ASEAN uh, initiative from Go Asia. Uh, we, we are now formulating a proposal on Falami worm resistance management in Asia. Alison will talk about it, uh, focusing on regional Falami worm surveillance and resistance monitoring, country specific and regional resistance management, and integrating host plant resistance with biological control and selective IPM compatible insecticides for sustainable Falami worm control. This requires uh, a robust scientific data generation, academia, industry, farmers part uh, partnership, as well as a strong regional cooperation. So this is a pest that defies geographic boundaries, can spread fast within a season, no single solution that can provide sustainable control, no single organization has all the answers. So international research for development collaboration is important at the country level as well as at the regional levels. And that's why CIMIT has established this uh, FAR Research for Development International Consortium. And I would urge Asian institutions to also join this initiative so that we can synergize our efforts much better. And finally, IPM is not just integrated pest management. It also integrating uh, people's mindsets. The Fala Mimam is a pest that humbles us all. Uh, the effective strategy uh, means practical, affordable, scalable tools and management practices, uh, coupled with enabling policies uh, based on robust science and evidence. The pest is here to stay, and we require to develop and deploy sustainable IPM-based solutions for the short term, medium term, and long term. And uh, nothing is more important than well-coordinated responses at the national level, sub-regional level, and uh, even transcontinental levels. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. We'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Dr. Prasanna. Uh, do we have questions coming, coming in right now? Yes, uh, the first question. What do you think of using ICT or dig digital tools such as a remote sensing using UAV in the detection and control variable rate application of pond army worm? A very good question. Uh, excellent opportunities, especially COVID-19 pandemic uh, <laughs> has prompted us to use the such kinds of tools uh, much more effectively than ever before. Uh, in some countries like in China, already this is in practice uh, and uh, remote sensing of fields ascertaining falami worm damage uh, and calibrating your tools to differentiate falami worm damage from other 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 uh, diseases etc so this is really a, an important researchable area as well as an application area uh, beyond uh, this there is also tremendous opportunity to have a strong and robust monitoring system using digital and ict tools so uh, this is this is really the way forward. 
uh, not just by collecting laboriously data uh, through manual work, but also through remote sensing and digital tools. Uh, from 2016, what are the genetic uh, diversity seen in foreign army world? What is your opinion? Uh, in urban fast uh, spread since 2018, will COI be need, needed for a future analysis? Yes, there are some excellent publications that have come out recently, especially groups like Rodney Nagoshi uh, from US together with partners across Asia Pacific, uh, analyzing the genetic structure and the diversity in Palamivam populations uh, in the Asia Pacific. Um, so what it shows predominantly, it is the maize strain that is affecting the crops there. And that's not a surprise. But there are also hybrid strains that have been reported. Uh, that means maize, rice, hybrid strains, uh, uh, typically. Uh, but does it mean that this will remain like that forever? May not be. Uh, we need to be very cognizant of the fact that uh, there could be further evolution of Falamiwam populations. Uh, if there is an emergence of a strain that can also affect crops like rice, that could be even more devastating. So far, there is no evidence of that. Uh, uh, so therefore, we are fortunate, uh, but there is, there is no devastating rice strain, but uh, we cannot be cognizant, uh, what we call uh, complacent about it, need to constantly monitor the evolution of uh, Palamivam populations. Okay, we have next question. Oh, okay. uh, next question. Uh, do you think uh, foreign army will would remain or grow as a major threat in the next two to four years also? Yes, it, uh, it's a good question. Again, we do see the fluctuations in terms of country level incidents. Um, wherever some, some it, it's a, it, it has huge interdependence on climate and the level of management practices followed by the farmers in a country. Uh, so these are two major factors. Climate has a huge role to play uh, in Falami warm incidents. So when we talk about monitoring systems, we also need to have a better predictive modeling about what kinds of climates will be prevalent in a country and how it could impact Falami warm incidents, including the migrations of insects. So will it go away? I don't think it will ever go away. Uh, some, some one of my friends say that it's marriage without divorce. So it is unfortunately, once it has entered a country, typically a tropical country, it will stay. Even in Americas, it has stayed for more than 100 years. So uh, with all the management practices in place. So don't ever expect Falomi want to disappear. The level of infestation, the level of economic damage may vary from year to year, uh, but we do need to provide uh, strong practices, strong integrated tactics uh, to keep on to keep controlling this pest. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. So uh, we don't we don't have uh, no more uh, question right now. But I like the participant. Uh, please, if you have any question later, you can uh, send to us through the email or to the message. So we can take it and uh, forward it to our speak uh, our speaker to answer it and uh, we will put in the report later. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pasana. Please give him the back a big hand. <laughs> the next speaker uh, is uh, Dr. Alison Watson. Uh, she is the project manager of the ASEAN Action Plan project. So she has some background in international partnership and policy in the agricultural sector. Uh, Dr. Alison, uh, over to you, please. Thank you so much. And can you hear me well? Yes. Excellent. Um, well, good morning and thank you for the opportunity to speak today. It's fantastic to see the Thai Seed Trade Association and, and partners 
organising such events and it's vitally important for stakeholders to work together to control fall armyworm, improve IPM and build resilience of farmers to be able to respond to the many challenges they face uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. The speakers uh, before me have all very well emphasised this point and uh, hearing these different country experiences is very important. Um, so I'd like to thank those speakers from uh, Myanmar, Thailand and Philippines. I also heard the, the president of THASTA before tell us that we're still learning a lot about fall armyworm and the need to share our work and collaborate and coordinate directly across, across our region is important. And of course, it's always uh, it's always a pleasure to follow uh, an expert like Dr. Prasanna, who sets out the, the need uh, for work on this issue. So uh, it is a pleasure to present on the ASEAN Action Plan and Fall Army Worm, which continues this momentum of working together to, to manage this destructive pest. Next slide, please. So, of course, again, um, Dr. Prasanna actually set this out very clearly and, and other speakers, um, but this is a pest that needs to be controlled at all levels, at farm level, community, national, regional, and even the international level through the global action at FAO. The latest research in this region shows that this transboundary pest actually travels extremely long distances. Prasanna uh, mentioned that, but there's some recent Chinese research that's just been published that actually uh, showed that these moths were flying at 876 kilometers plus or minus 200 kilometers across the region with up to 26, 32 hours of flight. Uh, and sometimes uh, the longest distance was actually 1800 kilometers. Uh, they tracked a moth from Thailand right through to just off the coast of China. So that, that's a huge distance. And with such a fast moving pest, it's imperative that we have a very strong regional approach linked to national approaches with a menu of control options um, to ensure the successful management of fall armyworm. And even if one country has a very strong program, it's at risk of other programs in the region that don't successfully manage fall armyworm. So it's vital that we all work together. And on the next slide, what I just wanted to show there was that, what do we already know about fall armyworm? Well, we've had a really good picture today uh, from three countries. Uh, we've had a lot of background information from Prasanna. We can say that predominantly the form of control, particularly when first uh, when it first arrives, uh, has been conventional pesticide use, although you can see that growing interest in biocontrol strategies and a more holistic IPM approach, which we saw in our earlier presentation. A number of countries, as we saw, really building that national capability now through the setting up of task force or, or national um, national teams um, and they're developing protocols to manage the pest and this national capacity is really critical. Uh, we also have seen that there's regional partners, um, our neighbours ASEAN, of ASEAN like China, India and now Australia with the arrival there of fall armyworm last year doing significant work on fall armyworm and this work represents also a very important resource to, to this region. Uh, as well. The private sector is a hugely important partner in this work and is often actually leading a lot of the efforts in the field. So they're very important to bring into a multi-stakeholder approach. Um, one thing I'll just reiterate again is that we still don't really have a robust sense of the scale uh, and the location of fall armyworm infestation. We, we saw some good data today, but throughout the region at any one time, uh, we often don't have a clear picture of what is happening and to what extent. And that monitoring and surveillance, something that Prasanna said was extremely important. Um, that's something that the ASEAN Action Plan really wants to work on uh, as a key flagship activity. Uh, and so that's just ensuring that we don't underestimate and we don't overestimate as well uh, crop damage, for example, or underestimate uh, infestation. So that helps inform our future decision making. Um, fortunately, uh, as we've seen, that proactive early action in the field can really drive down the damage significantly and reduce crop loss. And so this is really crucial. So it's crucial because this is a potential huge economic impact on the region if we don't proactively manage it, but it's also significant because it provides us a huge opportunity to manage this pest in a sustainable manner. Next slide, please. 
So this is really why agricultural ministers signed off on a regional action plan last year. The ministers actually signed that off on the 21st, 21st of October. Uh, and it really tries to bring across the learnings, resources, actions, and thought power of the ASEAN region and across stakeholder groups. Uh, and using Prasanna's uh, IPM integrating people's mindsets approach, which I haven't heard before, but that's fantastic. That's central to this regional action as well. So that's good to see. Um, you can find a copy of the action plan on Grow Asia website. I'll post a link later um, for you. Uh, and I'm just very pleased to also share that we've just had generous funding announced uh, from the government of Australia that will actually help underwrite this action plan. Next slide, please. So just quickly, there are three goals to the action plan. It's really around reducing crop losses uh, and associated livelihood impacts, promoting sustainable cost-effective IPM and driving coordinated and effective multi-stakeholder communication. And under those goals on the next slide, you will see six objectives. And it's really around building capacity, consolidating the knowledge base that we already have, establishing a pest intelligence system across ASEAN so we know it can monitor and have surveillance and, and inform our decision making and promoting information transfer and adaptive learning. And under those six objectives, on the next slide, we have six work programs and they range from coordination communications right through to that developing that menu of approaches uh, that, that farmers can choose from, that regulators can choose from and, and leaving that choice there uh, of robust, safe, effective solutions in the IPM toolbox. On the next slide, I just wanted to move now to the, to the rest of the presentation is just to give you a highlight of key projects uh, that we're undertaking to give you a bit of a taste of the work. Uh, and we're really, um, this is a multi-stakeholder action plan. So we're really um, inviting partnerships and joint work between the public and private sector. So that in, and includes research community and farmers. So if you've got ideas or you've got an interest in being part of this action plan today, um, please message me um, and I'll give you my uh, email address to, to contact me directly. On the next slide, this is one of the first projects is to build a community of learning across Southeast Asia on full army worm control and IPM. So we are in the process of developing this knowledge and innovation hub, and this will be our central point of portal of communication. It's going to be a place we can bring people together, share your work, share our work, share everyone's work and discuss the latest efforts. Uh, and that will be really important. So I, I just like to thank Crop Life Asia. They, they generously donated um, some funding to get this uh, platform off the ground and operational. So, so thank you there. And I will be sending that link around to you all uh, as well when it goes live. On the next slide, another important part of the work is building capability within the enabling, enabling environment. Uh, and this is really important. In this case, what we want to do is develop and disseminate guidance and resources across the region to help support regulators in their roles. Um, there's already many resources out there. So what we want to do is find out what's worked, uh, what hasn't worked in other regions and, and other countries, bring those together and actually help support, uh, you know, gaps analysis, uh, sharing of information and um, really grow that knowledge base. We also want to really promote exchange and learning opportunities amongst our researchers and regulators across the region. So we really are building the capacity uh, in the region um, and this includes the private sector in this process as well, because the private sector are really leading proactively on a many fall army worm control solutions. So it's bringing everyone together uh, to work out how can we uh, leverage off that knowledge. On the next slide, Another important uh, part of the work that we're kicking off is uh, women as IPM leaders. We think that there's huge untapped potential in the role of women as IPM leaders and that this could be a real force for change across the region. And so this project will explore those levers for change as well as to promote means to strengthen the capacity of women, farmers and leaders in the region. And it goes beyond gender mainstreaming to really looking at opportunities for empowering women in new roles and systems. And that might be also linking that to digital, digital IPM solutions. On the next slide, this is a very important part. Uh, it's an activity that we're going to kick off very soon. On March to July 2021, we're going to be running a series of workshops to learn and create a work program. 
Um, this is incredibly important. As Wilma told us before in the presentation of the Philippines, empowering farmers is one of the best forms of control. And there are already lots of resources that have been developed in other parts of the world. We need to sort of sit down together and think about how can we better uh, equip our farmers with the knowledge that they need to make decisions about how they want to manage their, their farms and their crops. So that's a really important part of work coming up. On the next slide, we're looking at this other important work program. This is a key flagship uh, opportunity for, for the ASEAN Action Plan to really make a big difference. Prasanna really talked about how important it is. Um, it's not just about developing an early warning surveillance, but it's about a monitoring platform so that we can position our stakeholders across the region to understand the migration, the movement of pests and, and infestation levels to better inform our decision making. So this is a really important part and we've kicked off some initial discussions with experts in Thailand uh, to look at a possible pilot, but we actually have other work uh, that's developing with China, FAO uh, and um, also digital IPM providers as well. On the next piece of work that we've been um, working on is drones and digital IPM. And we'll be looking at um, different elements of this through from information and knowledge sharing um, to looking at what regulations are there and how is that enabling or providing barriers to the use of drones and digital IPM, uh, looking at small scale pilots and tech transfer work. And we did have a very successful webinar to kick off some of this work uh, last year. The next piece of work, uh, we've talked about this a lot today, it's related to biocontrol. Um, we've had a series that we've been developing, it's a six month series and we've had a lot of discussions on biocontrol. We see um, a lot of focus areas here and I think Prasanna actually had a lovely slide that put this out too. It's looking at not only information and knowledge sharing but looking at that regulation enabling environment, the research and capability that we need to build in this area and actually getting it out and actually trialing it uh, and making sure that it works um, effectively and it's uh, accessible for farmers in the field. Um, so this, this is a piece of work that we're developing with CABI uh, and we'll be um, undertaking a process to develop the whole projects there. So we'll be interested in your thoughts and there'll be calls for um, participation in that. If we look on the next slide, I just wanted to highlight that we started off with a biocontrol series last year, and this is an introductory series. If you want to go and have a look at these, they, the recordings are online, fantastic uh, recordings um, with lots of different examples and across this region and outside the region. Following that, we've been running on the next uh, slide, the ASEAN Action Plan Biocontrol Technical Workshop Series. It's that six month series that has already started. We've had huge amount of interest. We've got many experts from across the world. We've already run three workshops. And if we move to the next slide, I'll show you all the different workshops and opportunities for you to participate in this. So you'll see here, we've already done field collection. We've looked at rearing of parasitoids and predators, selection and release. Um, the next session, and we've talked about this a lot today, is biopesticide efficacy. Um, so we're gonna be looking at trials there. And then we're gonna move on on the 18th of March to that farmer acceptance of biocontrol approaches. How do you actually get it to farmers? How do farmers um, use and uptake that technology? And then how do you scale that up uh, across your country or across your region? So please join us for any of those sessions. They're really very interesting um, and the recordings are there as well. So moving on. This is something that Prasanna, um, I, I don't need to talk too much about this, but just Prasanna had already mentioned this. This is a very important part of IPM and a very important part of the ASEAN Action Plan. And as Prasanna said, uh, we're working on this now. He's helping to lead this work with Srinivas um, from Iraq. And uh, we've got a bit of a team that we've brought together and developing a concept document. And Prasanna neatly outlined some of those aspects. But this is really about making sure that farmers, regulators and stakeholders have access to all the tools in the IPM toolbox uh, now and in the future. So it's incredibly uh, important to our work. Next slide, please. And I've already talked about this. I just put this in just to uh, say that it is really important. Um, but if I move to the next slide, I'd just like to sum up about 
it's around working together and we really want to work uh, with you. We want to support partners across the ASEAN. We need you to actually input and actually be part of the decision making process and to, to give us your ideas and we'll be running um, workshops over the next six months so that you can do that. Um, so I will be advertising those and I'll make sure that I uh, send it to FASTA and others so that everyone has the opportunity to take part. So um, we really need to build that network across the region to control fall armyworm, but also to build resilience to other pests and diseases. And, and this is a good start to doing some of that wider work. If you have any questions, if you want to participate, if you're interested in any of the work programs and have ideas for projects, please email me at faw at growasia.org. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much. Uh, do we have a question here? Okay, I, I move now. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Watson. So uh, we have some question. Okay, uh, uh, the project on uh, women as an IPM leader is very interesting and looking forward to your final report about it. We could learn about it at uh, extension service team as well. May I know which country in Asia are you going to implement? Well, that, that's okay. a very good question. So actually we're at the very start. So we're really launching the implementation of the ASEAN Action Plan this year. Um, and so what we want to do is develop that program with interested stakeholders in this region. So it sounds like you are an interested stakeholder. And so we'd really like to hear from you. Uh, and we'll be putting a project team together and looking at um, what kind of work we need to do first to understand what, where, where are the levers uh, across our systems where we can help empower women to become the IPM leaders that, that they're capable of being. Um, and that, that may be through various different um, uh, areas of work. It could be through how do we empower them to uh, be leaders around using digital IPM. Uh, it could be how do we look at uh, women's role in really implementing uh, IPM and uh, you know, safety and health measures around the use of pesticides, for example. Um, so we're really interested to hear what you think, and we'd like to develop that um, in conjunction with stakeholders. Yeah. So, so please contact me. I, I think I've got your name here, so I can also contact you. So the next question, uh, our participant informed that uh, he said we are the webinar. Uh, session last year and on the bio pesticides available for accessing yeah so all the links uh, and i what i will do is I, I after this session uh, after i've finished speaking i will put the link in to the uh, web page uh, where you can access all the recordings uh, and they're extremely good and, and and i also just i want to urge people to please take part in the remaining uh uh, webinars on the biocontrol workshop series. Uh, what we want to do is end with a workshop and we're really keen to actually hear ideas from across the region on projects that you might like to work on. We might have a bit of a competition where we can kind of sort of see what is something that we could potentially pilot as well, which has um, learnings for the rest of the region. So it's a really exciting program, great speakers. Um, and so I'll put that link in for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question. Uh, will the CIMIT and Pro Asia working on a common uh, database for resistance? Is there a workshop on the uh, r and uh, component in 2021? Yeah, so actually um, Prasanna is here uh, and I, I hope you're still here Prasanna. Um, at, at the moment, uh, if you have something to add, please do so. Uh, it, it's this, it's CIMIT uh, Grow Asia, but it's part of the ASEAN Action Plan. So we have lots of partners involved uh, and we're actually working out exactly what we're going to be doing right now. So we have a draft paper uh, that'll soon go out for um, discussion amongst uh, public stakeholders. Uh, so you will have the chance to um, see what's in there and also add to it and um, give comments. So I'm not sure we're really at the stage yet where I can confirm we'll, whether we'll have a common database um, for resistance, but I do see something like that being very important and being sharing information that's extremely useful for for um, 
the region. Um, for the R&D component, I think you're meaning, I mean, around technology transfer, around drones, digital IPM, but also uh, biocontrol. Um, yeah, we will be having um, a workshop uh, potentially on that too. So for the um, for the biocontrol series, uh, we've we've done a six month program and we've tried to cover a variety of different uh, interest areas. We haven't covered everything, but we will be looking at the next phase uh, after the six months is finished. What do we want to go into more detail about? The second point is we'll be setting up a drones and digital IPM series very soon. So we'll be looking at some of those questions around research and development, what's needed, but also importantly uh, in this uh, field is how do you scale up some of these solutions and what are the business models existing and new that you will need in Southeast Asia to actually scale up and implement different uh, technology for the future? And that's a very important question that I think we need to do a lot of discussion on um, because we do need new solutions there as well as drawing on old solutions. Um, I've got another question here. So I'm gonna, I, I've, I can see the questions. Um, <laughs> So uh, around grants for women scientists, a PhD students. Um, this is the question is around are there ones for enabling women? But yes, there will be. But we're also looking at a program around actually grants for training for students, uh, postgraduate students, graduate students in research institutions and universities across Southeast Asia. That is something that we're actually looking at very seriously. We've got some interest in that. And we think that's a very good way of building up the talent and expertise within Southeast Asia countries um, so that so we have that expertise for the future to control fall armyworm and other pests and diseases uh, that face our farmers. No, no more questions. Uh, one, one more come. Oh. Uh, OK. Uh, at, uh, I can see it. Do you want me? <laughs> so this one, uh, yeah, Dr. Prasanna, I mean, he he uh, it was excellent. Um, he covered all the points that I wanted to cover as well, which is always good. But yeah, very strong about this ICT digital tools. I mean, I call it digital IPM. And I think that there's so much scope and potential here. Uh, it's understanding um, how do you introduce this uh, in Southeast Asia? Um, how do you design these applications for farmers, but also for regulators uh, as well and, and other stakeholders which use, can use these tools? Uh, and then how do you uh, get them to use them? And then how do you scale that up uh, across, across countries, across regions, countries, and across uh, ASEAN as well? Um, so that's actually a really big part uh, of our, our work program. And that's why I had it as a flagship. There's a digital IPM and drones uh, sort of flagship project there. And that's really essentially digging down into how can we get that to work better and at scale across Southeast Asia to control fall armyworm and other pests and diseases uh, for our farmers to manage them. It's a good question. And it's an exciting area of work. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Do we have any more questions for Dr. Wasson? Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Wasson, uh, for Thank your Thank you so much. It's very interesting. So Thank you, everyone. Uh, 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 based on, on the four projects. Okay. Uh, please give the big hand to Dr. Wasson. Uh, for our last speaker uh, for this morning, uh, uh, I think uh, we bring to you uh, the private uh, sector that take on the subject of uh, foreign army world. Uh, let us now let us know here from uh, Mr. Somsak Samanwong, uh, who will present about the issue and effort by the private sector in fighting the spread of uh, foreign army world. Uh, Mr. Somsak is the regional technician technical uh, educator for Asia Pacific at Cordeva. And he also uh, the current president of uh, PICOP uh, Protection Association. So let's welcome uh, Mr. Sumsak. Mr. Sumsak, uh, your presentation, please. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kunpa Shok, and dear guest speaker and organizer and participants. Uh, today, I will share you about uh, the private sector's issues and effort on for me 
So as uh, we know from previous speaker that uh, four armyworm was found in Asia in mid of uh, 2018, uh, first found in India, and then uh, after it's quickly spread out across the region. The outbreak uh, of four armyworm was confirmed in, in all in, in almost the region in, in Asia Pacific, from South Asia to ASEAN to China, Japan, Korea, and Australia. So it seemed like everywhere uh, we go crown in Asia, uh, we can we can we can find four armyworm over there. So this is the picture that I yeah that I got from a copy uh, website. As you can see, uh, how how fast of four armyworm uh, outbreak in Asia Pacific. Just only in uh, uh, this is uh, starting in uh, uh, 2018. Uh, you can see uh, it's outbreak in uh, uh, South Asia and also in Thailand. And after that, this year in January, we found that almost all the country in Asia Pacific uh, where we grow corn uh, got effect from uh, four armyworms. So uh, during uh, 19, uh, during, during 2018 to 2019, uh, uh, the, the private sector also has uh, three main issues when this pest uh, uh, invaded to Asia. First, uh, first issue, uh, we lack of uh, basic knowledge of this pest, uh, like, uh, uh, for example, like exposure, behavior, or distribution information, especially deep down to district level. So this knowledge is quite important for us. Uh, so this is the first issue we need to learn and understand about the, the basic knowledge about this pest. And second issue was about uh, time and budget uh, for coordinating research program or conducting a research program on farming worm uh, in order to find a solution uh, to help the farmer and, and the corn grower to control of this pest. And also to protect our corn, corn seeds for, from farming worm attacks because uh, private or uh, some of private sector also have uh, uh, seeds business. So we need to protect our seed as well, and also uh, helping the farmer as well in order to control on the pests. And uh, another issue is uh, in bringing technology and solution to the grower. Uh, it's quite take time because, uh, especially for product registration process and uh, labor expansion process, uh, these are taking time. And uh, different country they have different process. So that's why uh, this uh, become one of the, the main issue that we face uh, during those time. So how we uh, mitigate those issues uh, uh, from private sector? Uh, first of all, about the, the basics knowledge of our armyworm issue, we leverage knowledge and information from uh, inter international institutes uh, like uh, FAO, CAPI, CIMIT, uh, government agency, and also we leverage our experience from private sector in other regions because some of the company, we also have a branch uh, we also have a uh, headquarter uh, outside of Asia, for example, like in the US and uh, Latin America, uh, the company uh, which that in those locations, they have uh, plenty of knowledge and capability to, to handle this, this kind of new pairs. So we leverage all the knowledge from, from all the stakeholders. And after that, we need to create and build learning curriculums and also training program uh, to train ourselves first, to train our staff first, to train our uh, colleagues in, in order that uh, they will have uh, uh, what we call knowledge capability, and, and then after they can transfer this, this knowledge capability and information to stakeholder and grower to help them uh, to mitigate on farm minimum issue. So uh, uh, for solution finding, uh, how we mitigate this problem, uh, we collaborate with research institutes and government agency uh, in finding effective solution. Uh, we support them uh, in terms of information and uh, we share them, uh, we share those uh, researcher about the what we call solution that we have on hand as well. Uh, so uh, for example, like we have a chemical on hand, we have a free hormone on hand, we have a, a technology on hand, we share those information to a research institute and government agency in order that they can uh, test, they can do some tests, they can do some uh, uh, what we call a, a, a trial in order to do to, to prove that technology uh, and uh, give that technology to the grower. Uh, for, along, along with that, we also do some in-house research uh, programs on farm as well. Uh, for example, like uh, we test on crop protection products, which is uh, insecticides that we have on hand. And also we try to, to understand and develop the seed applied technology. Uh, as Dr. Pritachat mentioned, seed applied technology is one of the two 
uh, that good for control uh, on for omni worm. And uh, a part of that, we also uh, do some uh, research on biotechs and also uh, bio insecticide and pheromone and, 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 and incorporate those kind of knowledge together and provide the best practice in management of for omni worm, uh, which align with IPM uh, and IIM concept and also good application technique. So these are the, the, the thing that uh, we, we are trying to do and uh, put our effort uh, to find, uh, for finding solution to the problem. And one of the issues that we have made is bringing technology and solutions uh, to, to, to the grower. So uh, uh, during the first uh, come of uh, for me worm, we lack of experience and knowledge, right? So in this case, we invite our expert uh, from, uh, from other part of the world, from the US, from Latin America, uh, to come to Asia and to share their experience and information to, to, uh, to other uh, uh, colleagues in the region. For example, uh, we invite uh, government agency, uh, and at least an institute uh, to come together in Thailand. I think uh, this is the picture, as you can see from the picture, is what happened in uh, 19, uh, uh, in 2019, we invite uh, uh, the delegate guests from uh, Asian country to come to Thailand uh, to join our forum uh, education forum in Bangkok. And uh, uh, we share and we discuss together how to mitigate uh, this uh, pest and how to, to what you call collaborate and work together in order to help the farmer in this region. Not just only sharing experience and information, we also submit registration document in order to, uh, and also demonstrate on how our technology is working uh, to the government agency in order that uh, we can get a license and we can get approval to bring the, to, to, these technologies uh, to, the grow, to, to the grower. And uh, not just only uh, bringing technology to the grower, we also collaborate and support in knowledge uh, and, and technologies, technologies transfer program, because we, we know that this pest uh, farmer uh, in this region, uh, they are not familiar with this pest uh, during those time. Uh, so uh, uh, knowledge, capability, uh, technologies transfer program is quite important. So this is the example of effort on educational program that we uh, created and provide to uh, to uh, uh, to uh, what do you call to to our staff and also to external key stakeholder and farmer. Uh, as you can see here, this is the, one of the good example from Cotiva Agrisai, which is a member of uh, uh, TCPA as well. So uh, they create an e-learning program and and, uh, and more focus on Asia Pacific. And this e-learning program or e-learning modules. Uh, uh, has been translated into key uh, Asia uh, languages, uh, for example, like Chinese, Hindi, uh, Vietnamese, uh, Indonesia Bahasa, and the Thai language. And right now we are using uh, for internal learning, but in the future, perhaps we will consider to, uh, to share this kind of knowledge information to public as well. And we did also uh, create a few school uh, programs. So the few school program, uh, this one is for both internal learning and also uh, for external learning. Uh, we invite our, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, farmer, uh, we invite our key stakeholder, uh, the government officer, and also a, a research institute to come to the pot as well during early uh, outbreak of this pest. Because uh, 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 by doing a field school event, uh, the colleagues or participants can learn about uh, the damage of the pest, uh, can learn about how to scouting the pest, and can learn about uh, how to uh, control the pest and uh, what, 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 what are the good application techniques that necessary to control this, uh, this scout pest. So uh, the first school is what conducted uh, uh, before COVID-19. And after COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we have to change as well because uh, there are many, uh, what do you call, liberation and also restriction on traveling, right? So in this case, we turn uh, from field school or face-to-face -face event, we turn it uh, uh, by using uh, technology. Uh, we used a virtual, a training program, we create technical education studio. Uh, this is for example, that we have done for, for internal and also uh, for our uh, key customer and farmer. So uh, you can see here, we have live demonstration of uh, what you call the, the uh, corn stage, right? And then we, we let, uh, we demonstrate on uh, how to, uh, what you call, uh, how to measure on the damage, uh, how, to, uh, how to evaluate on uh, uh, debit scale, uh, implementation of daily scale and uh, the ETLs 
uh, on farm, we won't injury on corn crop in order that they can have effectively control, right? And also uh, we demonstrate on uh, what do you call uh, some of technology, for example, like seed apply technology. Uh, we are using a virtual uh, program and virtual uh, ICT technique in order to train the, uh, our stakeholder and also uh, uh, our, uh, what do you call, uh, employee. So after that, uh, once our employee have knowledge capability, uh, they can share this knowledge, knowledge and information to the grower effectively. So uh, a part of that, we also have uh, uh, what you call uh, produce a lot of materials and, and, and for example, like newsletter and article in order to raise awareness of our uh, problem uh, to, uh, to the government and to the society, to act society. You can see here, we produce some of technical fact sheet. We also, uh, what do you call, put the story on local newspaper and also uh, the social media as well. And also we support the TV documentary program in order to raise awareness of this problem. For example, like we work uh, with uh, BBC on Follow the Foods program. And also we uh, support uh, Channel New Asia in order to uh, convey the message to the grower and then in order to let the farmer uh, know that uh, this type of new pest already come to Asia. So uh, we work with uh, many stakeholders as well. And also for science seminar, this is one of the program that uh, we, 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 uh, we're working with. Uh, for example, in uh, 2020, uh, in December in Thailand, uh, by collaboration with uh, Thailand Zoology, uh, Anthropology and Zoology of Thailand, and also TASTA, uh, we conducted a technical seminar on four worm in order to update new technology in uh, to control non farm worm to uh, to uh, what called to the uh, ag community and also we do live stream uh, 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 through the Facebook uh, channel as well and then farmer can look through uh, what are the new technology uh, that they can bring and use uh, in the future and uh, back to uh, 2019 uh, we also uh, working and uh, collaborating with uh, uh, what we call a national uh, uh, national plant protection center and also uh, Fly Philippines as well. Uh, during those times, we also transfer the knowledge and information uh, that we have on hand and share those knowledge and information to, uh, to the government agency and public sector uh, in the Philippines as well. And as well as in Indonesia, even before uh, army worm attack came to Indonesia, uh, we already, uh, what we call, proactively uh, working with uh, 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 entomology, zoology of Indonesia, and also the university over there and government agency over there, in order to share information that that we have to to the government agency and to the public sector uh, in uh, in uh, Indonesia as well. So these are the things that uh, private sector uh, have done. Uh, these are the effort that we uh, we contributed uh, regarding to farm even, to act society. And this is one of the example about the farmer reach out program. As you can see here, during two years, uh, this is just really, uh, uh, one, one example from one company. So uh, uh, within two years, we reached out to the farmer about 200 uh, people farmer. So uh, this is just only example of one company and how about if we work together uh, uh, from private sector, government agency, uh, Department of uh, Agriculture Extension in each of the country. Uh, perhaps in the future, if we work together, we have a good collaboration. Perhaps we can reach out to uh, millions of millions uh, grower uh, and help them to mitigate on farming worms uh, problems. So I just uh, I just would like to share you uh, a short video, uh, uh, which uh, can show that uh, collaboration is the key of success. Uh, this is the example from Thailand. กองทัพของผู้ก่อการร้ายที่บุกเข้ามาในภูมิภาคนี้แล้วก็ทําลายความมั่นคงของอาหารของเราความอดอยากก็จะเกิดขึ้นฝ่ามีเวิร์มเข้ามาในประเทศไทยมาสามารถกินได้ไกลมากๆทำลายข้าวโพดทั้งแปลงได้ในเวลาไม่กี่วันนอนกระทู้ไรจุดข้าวโพดนะฮะไม่ต้องการใช้วีซ่าในการที่จะข้ามประเทศเกษตรกรต้องทําการป้องกันประเทศไทยตอนนี้เราก็เป็นครัวของโลกประชากรส่วนใหญ่อยู่ในภาคเกษตรทุกปีมันไม่เคยเป็นไม่เคยเป็นโลกภูมิมาอย่างรุนแรงมากเลยนอนปีนี้
เนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่สําคัญนะครับเพราะว่าข้าวโพดเนี่ยเป็นส่วนผสมหลักในการผลิตอา,อาหารสัตว์ผลิตอาหารส่งออกไปในประเทศต่างๆมากมายมีความร่วมมือกับทั้งภาคเอกชนและภาคราชการด้วยกันเองรวมทั้งเกษตรกรประเทศไทยทำงานนี้รวดเร็วแต่โดยเราสามารถที่จะออกคำแนะนำฉุกเฉินภายในหนึ่งสัปดาห์ที่ศัตรูตัวนี้เข้ามาในประเทศไทยต้องเป็นความร่วมมือระหว่างในระดับภูมิภาคถ้าเราจำกัดประเทศเดียวไม่สามารถที่ดูแลมันได้สำหรับคอที่ว่านะฮะเราก็เลเวลเลชหรือว่าเอาความรู้ที่เรามีนะฮะองค์ความรู้ที่เรามีจากอเมริกาเรามีเบลเทคนะฮะเบลเทคโนโลยีนะแต่ณวันนี้เนี่ยเกษตรกรหลายๆได้รู้สึกการเดินไปด้วยกันร่วมกันแก้แก้ไขปัญหาให้กับพี่น้องเกษตรกรเนี่ยก็ต้องสู้กันต่อไปต้องเป็นความร่วมมือ So uh, this is my last slide. Uh, uh, I think the uh, uh, as Dr. Prasanna and also Dr. Alisa uh, from Croatia mentioned that uh, uh, collaboration is the key of success and uh, let let works together to manage uh, invasive uh, species. Collaboration is critical. So uh, I would encourage everyone, uh, including private sector, to work together to mitigate this problem for uh, for our farmer. Yeah, so that's all of my presentation. Uh, thank you. Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? No. Uh, the question comes to you, uh, Kun Songsa. Can okay, please, uh, can you please share a link for video? Uh, yes, uh, I will place the link uh, uh, to the. I, I will share the link to uh, uh, to you, and then you can place on the the website. This is to our form BBC uh, uh, follow the food program. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? So we come to the end, uh, the last the last session, to the end of the the, the webinar today. So uh, we would like to thank you, everyone, uh, who joined us this morning. Uh, again, those of you who have uh, any uh, question, please uh, send us the, the message or the email so uh, we will get it to our speaker to, to answer it and uh, we put in the, our report uh, later. So uh, indeed, we have a lot to learn from each other and from our experience, this webinar only emphasizes the need for more shared information about for NAMI worm and even more collective effort from all stakeholders in the industry as we try to successfully manage uh, the present of foreign army work in our crop. Thank you again to all the organizers of uh, this webinar, uh, the Thai Department of Agriculture, APSA, TCPA, and TASA, and also to all our speakers. Thank you for the relevant information you share today, and we hope to continue exchanging data about foreign army work in the future. So thank you, everyone. And have a nice day. Thank you.